Good morning, my friends. How are you? So uh, here we are together again, uh, continuing our exploration into the nature of the self, into the nature of reality, into the nature of existence, into the nature of uh, interconnectedness, into the nature of entanglement, into the nature of uh, relationship, into the nature of uh, interdependent co-arising, into the nature of every possible experience. So I'm glad that uh, you're joining me right now. I'm waiting for us to be up to about 1,000 before I continue uh, my conversation. So today's topic is you, you generate all experience, not your brain. Your brain does not generate experience. I'll repeat that. Your brain does not generate experience. You do including the experience of that which humans call brain. Once again, your brain does not generate experience. You do, including the experience that humans call the brain. So, why is this important? And uh, I think once you totally understand that you are the generator of all experience, including the experience of that which you call mind, including the experience of that which we call brain, including the experience of that which we call body, including the experience we call the physical world. Once you know that, and then once you figure out who that you is, then that's your ticket to not only freedom but immortality beyond the constructs of birth and death. Hello, Salongo. Good to see you here. Um, hello, Anna Paulette from Uruguay. Good to see you here. Hello, Lisa. Good to see you here. Okay, so I am going to try and focus on this uh, um, conversation right now, and then uh, I will respond to some of the questions, and I'm glad that you're listening. Okay, so... To start our conversation, I'm going to uh, read indirectly um, and directly uh, from my computer, which is right next to my handheld device, which I'm using right now to, um, to speak to you. Good morning, Aurora Carlson. Um, thank you. Good morning, Annette Jewell. Thank you. So. Let's go back to our conversation. Your brain does not generate experience. You do. You generate the experience of mind, of brain, of body, and that which you call the physical universe. Why is this important? Well, so once you understand this totally and completely and figure out who that you is that is generating the experience of mind, brain, body, and that which humans call the universe, then uh, that will be your ticket to freedom and also to immortality. But before I start, I'm going to read to you something from Discover Magazine, an article that was uh, written actually less than about two years ago. So this article is by Tom Fulger, and it's in the magazine called Discover, in the section called The Sciences, October 23rd. Uh, and um, uh, the year is, I think, uh, 2019. So it's a pretty recent article. The headline of the article is How Quantum Mechanics Lets Us See, Smell, and Touch. Okay, and then I'm going to skip a bunch of this, but uh, I'm going to read you something that's very interesting and show you where it's correct and possibly 
where it may not be correct, okay? So this section of the article is called Sight Unseen. Okay, so you're quaffing your coffee, nearly awake. Your eyelids are gearing up for daytime mode, blinking, letting in a bit of the light that's streaming through the window. As you sip your brew, ponder this, the particles of light warming your face and entering your eyes originated a million years ago in the center of the sun. Around the time, our not quite human ancestors started to use fire. Imagine, the photons entering your eyes right now originated a million years ago in the sun. Um, not quite, uh, around the time, our not quite human ancestors started to use fire. The sun wouldn't even be sending out those particles named photons if not for the same phenomena that might underlie our sense of smell. And this phenomenon is called quantum tunneling. Some 93 million miles separate from the sun and earth, some 93 million miles separate the sun and earth so the separation between sun and earth is 93 million miles and it takes photons just over eight minutes to cover the distance. But the bulk of their journey occurs inside the sun where a typical photon spends a million years trying to escape. Matter is so tightly packed at the center of our star, the hydrogen, there is about 13 times denser than lead that photons can travel only at an infinitesimal fraction of a second before being absorbed by a hydrogen ion, which then splits the photon out for another soon to be interrupted journey, ad infinitum. After about a billion trillion such interactions, a photon finally emerges from the surface of the sun, having zigged and zagged randomly for a thousand millennia. But the photons never would have been born and the sun wouldn't shine were it not for quantum tunneling. The sun and all other stars generate light by nuclear fusion, smashing hydrogen ions together to form helium, a process that releases energy. Every second, the sun converts about four million tons of matter into energy. Unbelievable. But hydrogen ions, single protons, have positive electrical charges and naturally repel each other. So how can they possibly fuse? With quantum tunneling, the wave nature of protons allows them to overlap ever so slightly, like ripples merging on the surface of a pond. That overlap brings the proton waves close enough so that uh, another force, the strong nuclear force, which kicks in only at extremely small distances, can overcome the particle's electrical repulsion. The protons fuse and release a single photon. And those photons are entering your eyes right now to presumably create this experience visually. The experience of me, the experience of your device, and everything else, okay, including actually right now the experience of hearing because electromagnetic energy is streaming through intergalactic space, including uh, satellites out in the um, um, out in space and making it possible for you to see me and hear me. Our eyes have evolved to be exquisitely sensitive to these photons. Imagine, you know, the evolution of our eyes and photons released a million years ago from the sun are correlated. Some recent experiments have shown that we can even detect single photons, which raises an intriguing possibility. Could humans be used to test some of the weird features of quantum mechanics? That is, could a person like a photon or an electron or Schrodinger's hapless cat, dead and alive at the same time, directly engage with the quantum world? What might such an experience be like? 
So the article goes on, but basically it says, ultimately, that all information uh, that goes to the brain um, is probably quantum. Our sense of touch then arises from extremely complex interaction between electrons around the molecules of our bodies and those of the objects we encounter. From that information, our brain creates the illusion that we possess solid bodies moving through a world filled with other objects. Touch doesn't give us an accurate sense of reality. And it may be that none of our perceptions match what's really out there. My friend Donald Hoffman, a cognitive neuroscientist at the University of California, Irvine. And please check out my talk with him at the University of California, Irvine. It's called Solution to the Hard Problem of Consciousness. So uh, Donald says that our senses and brain evolved to hide the true nature of reality, not to reveal it. Quoting Don Hoffman, my idea is that reality, whatever it is, is too complicated and would take us too much time and energy, he says, to figure out. But we're going to figure it out here. Okay, so according to what I've read to you, quantum information in the form of um, um, electrical information, or you might even say electromagnetic information, is streaming into your brain through your five senses. And somehow, when it gets into your brain, it creates the experience of a physical body and the physical world. In other words, the brain generates that experience that converts quantum information into the perceptual activity that we call physical body and physical universe. That's what I'm reading. I don't think that's true. Okay, I don't think that's true. I think um, sensory information doesn't stream from the outside world into our brain. It's the other way around. Um, our consciousness generates what we call information in the form of experiences that we call qualia. Qualia are qualities of awareness. And then we interpret, human consciousness interprets this um, information ultimately as everything that we call uh, scientific reality. That includes um, energy, that includes uh, matter that includes the physical world and that includes the experience of that which we call the brain as well and that includes every possible experience we can have including mental experience into the form of thoughts emotions images creativity insight imagination intuition, choice, all of that is generated in consciousness. And that consciousness modifies itself into the experience that we call information, energy, matter, physical brain, physical body, and physical universe. All of that experience is an intermittent stream of uh, sensations in one word, being generated in consciousness as it seeks to know experience by modifying itself as sensations. By sensations, I mean any subtle sensation, including the sensation that we call color, including the sensation shape, including the sensation form. They're all the same, by the way, color, form, and, sense, and uh, appearance or, uh, or shape are all the same. So consciousness generates information in the form of sensation. That's it. Whether that sensation is the form of uh, perception, like color, form, shape, sound, um, 
just this sensation, texture, hardness, softness, uh, whatever, uh, smell, or let's say fragrance, and uh, also uh, flavor. That's all we experience. Then the rest, and all that is, is consciousness modifying itself into a sensation. Even the sensation, subtle sensation of a thought or a subtle sensation of an image that we call imagination. So consciousness is modifying itself into this, bubbling as it is. And then human consciousness is interpreting this as a solid physical world because of the interaction of this information. When you touch your hands, electrons are bumping into electrons, creating the experience of what we ultimately call solidity. And um, actually, even your hands right now are not touching each other. They're separated just a little bit um, by a field of electromagnetic activity causing repulsion like two north poles of a magnet or two south poles of a magnet and so we are constructing the experience of solidity we are constructing the experience of color vision form we are constructing the experience of the milky way galaxy of stars of planets of the moon of the sun of our body of the brain, of the mind. Actually, mind and brain are the same thing. The brain is um, um, the perceptual experience of mind. Mind, on the other hand, is a modified experience of the self. Okay. So the self is modifying itself as experience in the form of what we've also really said, qualia. We are conscious agents embedded in a matrix of conscious agents in human and non-human, other species, other, uh, other uh, sentient beings, including plants. And we're embedded in this uh, matrix of conscious agents projecting that which we call brain, mind, body and physical world we are creating it why is this important why is this important this is important because what we have done is actually we've sacrificed ourselves for the experiences we've chosen consciously and unconsciously um, the experiences we've chosen to generate and as a result of that, we've lost, um, actually, in many cases, the memory of our eternal, timeless self. This is what actually even the, the Christian Bible uh, means when it says, what good does it gain a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul. So when we lose the memory of who we are and sacrifice it for that which we call experience, then we um, basically end up in having an experience that we call a physical body in space and time, in a theater of space-time, causality and physical objects sacrifice ourself to construct a physical reality and that's all good um, the, 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 the relative world of space time and causality is the self-sacrifice of the absolute but when the absolute in you and me forgets its true nature and confuses itself with the relative experience and binds its identity to the relative experience, then we end up um, knowing ourselves as um, basically uh, little entities squeezed into the volume of a body and the span of a lifetime. 
and that creates all the usual modes of suffering attachment clinging grasping um, that which is ungraspable because every experience is a snapshot of perceptual activity so clinging grasping repulsion fear the five kleshas identifying with a false identity ego the fear of death all actually uh, are um, a result of the mistake of the intellect which um, is um, confusing yourself with the experiences you've generated including the experience of the brain today by the way neuroplasticity and epigenetics is obviously showing us that we can modulate the activity of our genes we can change our microbial genes completely and we can change um, the connectome of our brain and in fact we can also create neurogenesis and synaptogenesis in fact we can sculpt our brain by choosing experiences our uh, baseline brain is um, uh, is um, is uh, created or constructed uh, by our genes, the genes that we inherited from our parents, but afterwards it's sculpted totally by experience and the experiences that we choose. Okay, and what is the experience we choose? A sensation, that's it. That's all we experience, sensations. Of course, sense perceptions are sophisticated sensations. Thoughts are subtle sensations, dreams are subtle sensations, images are subtle sensations. One word, sensation. And what does sensation give rise to? Qualia. And what are qualia? Qualities of experience. And how do we interpret qualia? Mind, brain, body, universe. So who's the you that is generating the experience of uh, mind, body, universe and brain and this conversation who or what is that you that you is formless and inherently has no qualities and all qualities at the same time no qualities because all qualities remain dormant till the moment of experience and all qualities because we consciously and unconsciously choose the experiences consciously and unconsciously choose the experiences these experiences are channeled through the conditioned mind in human beings and actually follow a bandwidth of perceptual activity that is unique to every species and these species are actually conscious agents expressing themselves as biological organisms and the world that goes along with that. Okay, sounds complicated, but it's not. Just look at the branches of a tree. Okay, each branch of the tree is expressing a different experience for the tree. And each branch of the tree is connected to the roots of the tree. And in fact, the branches, the roots, the trunk, the air, the ecosystem, the flora, the fauna, the birds, the bees, the microbes, um, the stars, the galaxies, and the infinite void are all in every twig of every branch, uh, in every flower, in every seed of that tree, which can recycle as innumerable forests and ultimately innumerable seeds and trees and manifestations all in that one seed and that seed is the dormant potential for the creation of trees flowers forests and its entanglement with the whole ecosystem of existence so what are those seeds in you and me? They are called sanskaras. Seeds, uh, residues of past experiences, interpretations of past experiences, leading to vasanas or tendencies for future choices, 
and the recreation of experiences, which we call karma, which recycles and evolves to higher degrees of creativity, abstraction, imagination, and creation. You are the infinite being orchestrating a human experience um, and expanding it now even through technology, VR, augmented reality, deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, algorithms, all created by us. I walk in the New York City and I see this is our creation. But then if you walk in the same city, look at the Milky Way galaxy at night, this too is your creation. And if you look at your body, this too is your creation. The formless in you is morphing as form and phenomena that we call mind, brain, body, and the entire universe. This formless is not in space or time and can morph itself into infinite modes of knowing that we ultimately label as information, energy, and physical matter. If you get this, and you also get the fact that you as a conscious formless being can choose the sensations you want to experience, colors, shapes, forms, fragrances, and flavors, and textures, then the confederation of these sensations ultimately, and the interpretation of these confederation of entangled qualia is what we call the physical world. This is how we conceive, construct, govern, and become all of existence. And if we go back to that source, which is constantly there, just like, uh, you know, if I look at a light bulb, I look at a transistor radio, I look at a television screen, I look at a microwave oven, I look at my watch, and uh, I know that they're all powered by the same electricity. So do I know, so do we know, that all experience is powered by consciousness, modifying itself into everything that we call reality. And to transcend back to this source, and I, by the way, in a previous post, I outlined the 12 step program for waking up to this fundamental reality of our timeless, immortal, infinite being, the 12 steps go back and I'll expand on that. In fact, I'll create a whole course on that and hopefully even a master class, a digital master class to um, um, get back to our source, which is the source of all existence, then that will be freedom from karma. It will be infinite joy and it will be our ticket to immortality. Yes, everyone is saying, Aurora, Rachel, all of you are saying, um, we should do the 12 step uh, um, masterclass sometime and we will. I'm going to plan it. I'm going to do a live event on the 12 step masterclass through Chopra Global and then we we'll digitize it and create uh, a, a wonderful masterclass where we can actually use everything including all the technology that we have created to continue our journey through cosmic time. Okay, 12 steps to the awakened life. Thank you and God bless.